Alhamdulillah. What's authentically narrated, I want to share with you brothers tonight because you guys motivated me. I came here, I was a little tired, and now I see all the people that came out in this cold night. It's very cold to me. You know, this is not Florida. We're not in Disneyland, you know? It's England. Bismillah. So I want to share with you something that's very special with me or to me. It's a hadith. Musawsala al awwaliya Hadith in the silsila or the chain of al awwaliya It's the type of hadith that I'm going to narrate to you from the Prophet Sallallahu with a chain from me going back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I will give you my isnad to this hadith Everyone in here, if you put your name on a list that's present and listening to me, وَأُجِيزُكُمْ and give you ijazah to narrate it. Understand that the hadith of Musalsila is a hadith that you have to do. Everyone in the na narration did the same thing that the narrator did. Every narrator, every narrator, every narrator. So in this hadith, of Awwaliya, the narrator at the end of it says, and this was the first hadith I heard from my sheikh or Ustad Abu Toba. This is the first hadith I heard from my sheikh, Muhammad Al Farooq Al Misri. He said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, الراحمون يرحمهم الرحمن ارحموا من في الأرض يرحمكم من في السماء وهو أول الحديث سمعت من شيخي It goes as such الراحمون Those who are merciful يرحمهم الرحمن the most merciful, Ar-Rahman, will have mercy on them. Irhamu man fil ard. Be merciful to those in the land, in the earth. Yarhamkum man fil sema. And the one in the sky will be merciful to you. And it's the first hadith that I ever heard from my sheikh. So if you narrate this hadith from me, at the end of it, you have to say, and this is the first hadith that I heard from Abu Toba. And he said it was the first hadith that he heard from his sheikh. And in order to get the names in this narration, you would have to put your name on this paper, inshallah ta'ala, and we'll try to get it to you from the brothers in the masjid, inshallah. And that's my gift to you guys for coming out tonight. And you have the names that you can narrate back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the conditions that when you narrate it, you remind them that they also, if they narrate it, have to say it's the first hadith that they heard from you, insha'Allah ta'ala. So you have to be careful with this hadith and not go to teach the science hadith to them and start with other hadith. My topic here tonight is discipline. D-I-S-C-I-P-L-I-N-E, discipline. Discipline is the instant willing obedience to orders, respect for authority, self-reliance, and teamwork. Discipline. D-I-S-C-I-P-L-I-N-E. Discipline. You say the word, you spell the word, you say the word. The instant willing obedience to orders respect for authority, self-reliance, and teamwork. This is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He teaches us. Allah teaches in the Quran, He says, فَلَا وَرَبَّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ 
He says, I swear, but no, I swear by your Lord, they are not believers. Until they use you, Muhammad. He says, but no, I swear by your Lord, they are not believers until they use you, meaning the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, as a judge in all their affairs. Then they don't find in, in their own selves any haraj, any bad feelings towards the sunnah, towards what they've been ordered to do. And they submit wholeheartedly. So the first concept in discipline is the instant willing obedience to orders. If you obey the orders of Allah and you don't like it, you're not really willing, and you're doing it because you're forced to, this is a type of hypocrisy because you're outwardly doing something that you inwardly dislike. But if you do it, and mahabba is a condition for tawheed, for la ilaha illallah, one of the conditions for la ilaha illallah is mahabba. To love for the sake of Allah and to love what Allah has ordered you to do and not to hate it. The instant willing obedience to orders. Respect for authority. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us to have respect for authority. He tells us to obey Allah and obey the Messenger of Allah and obey those people who have positions of authority over us, leadership. So to have discipline is not only the instant willing obedience to orders, there is a respect for authority. The Prophet ﷺ said, Laysa minna, he's not one of us. Whoever does not have respect, waqir al kibar, have respect for the elders and merciful ala sirah and it's merciful on the youth the young laysa minna it's not one of us this doesn't mean he's a kafir but it means he's not upon the minhaj of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the methodology and the way the prophet went about things and i'm mentioning discipline here because this seems to be a, an integral ingredient that we're missing in our lives the concept of discipline enabling us to do other things and accomplish goals the major and most important of which is to save ourselves and our families from the fire that's our major and, and primary goal would you not agree or you have some other goal in mind i'm talking it's not the khutbah to jumu'ah you can respond if you have some other concept. Alhamdulillah. The instant willing obedience to orders, respect, respect for authority, self-reliance. Allah says in the Quran, the fact of the matter is that Allah orders us It's justice. It means to do what in that place, what's supposed to be there. There is no extreme injustice. Because you put in there what belongs there without tafrit, without going too far or putting too little. That's what justice is. It's opposite is dhulm, oppression. You haven't done that thing, justice. So Allah orders us bil adl. Not only does He order us with Him being just, but for us to be just. Well, ihsan, and he orders us not only with excellence, but for us to be excellent. And we have the famous hadith where Allah ordered, Kataba fi kulli shayn, ihsanan. He's written, ordained, and when it's kutiba or katiba, that means this is maktuba, this is something that is legislated. That we in all of our affairs be excellent. And the Prophet went on to say, so if you slaughter, what do you do? So do good, be excellent in slaughtering. Sharpen your knife so that you can, you can cut the animal with ease. 
make it easy for the animal to die. So this is the case with something like slaughtering. What about something above that? In your day-to-day -day interactions with each other, your day-to-day -day interactions with your wives and your children, your day-to-day -day interactions at your work and in your skill set, everything above that it's like the ruling of uff if you can't say uff to your mother you can't say no you can't resist likewise if you've been ordered to be excellent in slaughtering a goat or a sheep then you've been ordered to be excellent in everything that is more important than that discipline the instant willing obedience to orders respect for authority, self-reliance, and teamwork. So Allah is telling us here, He orders us to have aum, to help each other. Helping each other is working together. To cooperate with one another. Allah's Messenger said that Allah is in the aum, help of the slave as long as he is in the aum of his brother, as long as he's consistent in helping his brother. And Allah has ordered us to cooperate and help each other on those things that are touching on righteousness and taqwa and the consciousness and the remembrance of Allah. And not to cooperate with each other on those things that are dealing with sinful matters and animosity towards each other and he went on further the Prophet Sallallahu when the companions help he said help your brother when he is oppressed and when he is the oppressor this is a famous hadith nothing you know new here they said Ya Rasulullah we know how we can help our brother when he is oppressed, when people are hurting him or going after him in a negative manner, how can we help him when he is the oppressor? He said, hold his hand. Hold his hand. So we need to learn how to put that into practice in our daily interactions with each other. Discipline. The instant willing obedience to orders Respect for authority, self-reliance, and teamwork. I don't have much more to say. I want to leave you brothers with that concept, the concept of discipline. And to think about it, because if you don't know the definition, how do you know you have it? How do you know that you're applying it in your life? The instant willing obedience to orders, respect for authority, self-reliance, and teamwork. Aqulu kauli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum.